have Tim on the line from NAB Leviscaris. You guys have just come back from a huge tour season and you are coming down here with a massive tour and bringing a ton of friends with you. How are you feeling about it? I'm feeling pretty great, to be honest. I mean, I think it's the best tour package we've, we've ever brought to Australia. You know, ticket sales have been amazing. It's definitely going to be the biggest ever shows that we've done in Australia as a headline act. And you can't really ask any more than doing that with a bunch of bands that that we, that we love ourselves and that we're great friends with. Uh, you know, Calypio Source, Beyond Creation, Allegiant, and Rivers of Night. Yeah, so how did these bands come about? These are four pretty heavyweights of, you know, a metal industry as well as you guys. This is a serious lineup. You know, we just booked up the bands that we like and that we're friends with. You know, it was that, <laughs> it was that simple. But like, you know, obviously, you, we, you know, you, you gravitate towards some other, uh, you know, bands in the scene and, you know, some of these, well, these bands are some of the bands that we, we love and respect the most out of the bands that, uh, you know, we're traveling around with, you know, so, I mean, Caligula's Horse, I've been friends with them for years. We've been talking about touring together for years, and just the timing's never been quite right, and thankfully they were available. But the funny thing with how this tour package came together was that originally when I was talking to the guys about all the different ideas, it was like, okay, cool, well, we can do, you know, we could get us and Caligula's Horse, or we could get, like, us and, you know, Beyond Creation, and, like, maybe another, or... You know, at one stage, I think I had a bunch of it was like us and like a Legion and Rivers of Nile or something like that. But none of the versions had all of the bands. But then we started kind of talking to each of the bands and Cleo's horse said they were available and keen. And, you know, we were talking to Rivers of Nile and they were available and keen. I was like, okay, cool. We've got both those bands, which is really, you know, great. And then we were on our North American tour and, uh, you know, a couple of the guys from a Legion came to one of the shows and, you know, they were like, hey, like, when are you going to bring us to Australia? And it's like, well, you know, maybe we should. And then a few days after that, we were in Montreal, Canada, and uh, the guys from Beyond Creation came to the show. And their new album was out like the next day, and they gave us a copy, and we were listening to the bus, and we were like, wow, this sounds really great. Um, and they were like, oh, when are you going to bring us back to Australia? <laughs> so we were like, Oh, like how do we choose between? Because we thought, oh, maybe we could bring a third band. Like, how do we choose between the Legion and Beyond Creation? And we love them both; they're both good friends of ours. And then I was like, screw it, let's just bring all of the bands, and uh, you know, just make it this you know incredible night for everybody. And um, you know, and then we just kind of worked, okay, well, how much do we have to charge to do that? And we thought, well, we think a lot of people will turn up, so hopefully we can keep it pretty reasonable. And it's been working out really well so far. So very excited for May to come around. That is amazing. This uh, whole press package does not come off as a bunch of metal mates just playing shows together. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely one of the, the fun things where it's like, you know, I mean, Rivers of Nile are the only band who we don't know personally. Like, I love their music. You know, we're huge fans of those mm-hmm. guys. But um, but at the same time, they're good friends with some of the other bands on the bill. Like, I know Allegiant and Rivers of Nile are really good friends. So, you know, I was talking to the Legion guys about the fact that the only band we don't know is Rivers, and they're like, "Oh yeah, they're like we're friends with them. They're great guys, and so I'm sure within like 24 hours, like everyone will be made. So it's just going to be a whole bunch of friends hanging out and playing music, and hopefully everyone have a great time. Absolutely. Uh, I should mention the Painted Progression Tour is from May 9th till 12th. It is pretty much right around the corner. One question I have though is about logistics. You've got five bands here. And I think the smallest song I have from Nia Bluviscaris is six minutes. How are we going to fit everybody on stage? Is there... I'm worried about set times here, is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Sure. I mean, I guess it's one of the compromises of having a bigger lineup. You know, like, not everyone can play for an an hour and and play all of their songs. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, going to try to give as much time to everyone as we can. And uh, I, I think the, the great thing about this tour will be that it is introducing, you know, some new bands to the scene. You know, Rivers and Al never played here, or Legion never played here. You know, Beyond Creation have just been here the one, one time. And, uh, you know, hopefully what this tour can do you know, for those bands is give them a chance to really, you know, show the Australian audience, like, how amazing they are. Um, and then, 
you know, get them so many new fans that then they can come back on their own headline by, uh, tour on the next album, you know, whether it's a year or two down the track or whatever, you know, and then, and then play a longer set through there. And, uh, I mean, that's what most fans do going through the US and Europe. It's always that thing of, you know, hitting the market, you know, playing a little bit of a shorter set and then hopefully if enough people like it, you go back and I guess play the full show then. Bigger, like building bigger and better things. I love it. Yeah, help them grow the scene here in Australia. That's the idea. Absolutely. How are you feeling about the Australian metal scene at the moment? It's definitely, and Melbourne and Sydney are definitely putting in, you know, time. But uh, as well as the metal scene seems to be, uh, you know, it's always we're always on the outcasts and always on the uh, fringes of of uh, the music scene. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's obviously different aspects to the scene. One is like the fans here and you know how they're reacting to, to the bands and you know. Are they coming out to shows and all that sort of stuff? And, you know, that seems to have been going from strength to strength with, uh, especially, you know, everyone's appreciation of local Australian brand, their bands, which has been really great. But then on the other side, there are just so many Australian heavy bands that are doing massive things internationally. I mean, like, you know, we have, like, one of the biggest heavy bands in the world right now is Parkway Drive. And there's obviously a whole ton of other metalcore hardcore bands that are doing massive things internationally. And then we have all these, like, you know, progressive bands doing massive things like Carnival or 12 Foot Ninja or you know, even Voyager. And, you know, obviously, you know, we do our best to do what we can as well. And, um, you know, there's just, you know, so many Australian bands, you know, doing a, a lot, you know, all across the world. And I, I think that's, you know, really, you know, wonderful thing for a country that really is, is pretty small when it comes to population size. Yeah, that and uh, the metal history. We definitely have some catching up to do with that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I think you know, I like to think we are right now. You know, we're seeing is creating music that a lot of people will be talking about for, for a long time. Absolutely, and you guys have definitely got some feet firmly planted there. Well, like I said, we just we just do our best to you know to do our thing, and hopefully people like it. <laughs> Definitely. Although I'll share a story with you about me going overseas to uh, meet the in-laws, and I had one of your shirts on, and they went, "Oh, who's that?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, metal band. You might not like." And they, "No, no, no, play it, play it." And I put it on. And they went, "Yeah, um, that, that's intense. Yeah, <laughs> with a, you know, kind of holy shit. What are we listening to for that song?" Yeah, you know, all music doesn't matter what genre, doesn't matter what what band. It's it's not not every band is for everybody. You know? yeah. We're obviously not. You know, not Coldplay or U2. You know, we're not trying to fill out stadiums. <laughs> you know, uh, like we're we're just trying to be ourselves, and don't, I don't really care what it sounds like. It's just making sure that it's true to our true to ourselves, and that we are making sure that we we love whatever we're doing musically. And if we do that, then whoever likes it likes it, and if whoever doesn't like it, that's fine. You know, they can go see some other band. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean this. Uh, can it fold straight into you guys uh, building the Patreon campaign that's gone really, really well? There must be a kind of overwhelming sense of support when it comes to this as well. Yeah, th- there is. And I think the great thing about setting up uh, you know, our, our campaign through Patreon, which has been running for, for three years now, is that to have that such a close connection with some of our biggest fans. You know, So there's about a thousand people you know, there, you know, give or take on average, and, uh, you know, these are people that, that we have regular relationships with, you know, that we're, you know, talking to, that we're meeting at shows, you know, that we're, you know, sending videos to each month, you know, that we're doing all sorts of stuff with and that, that, you know, when they turn up to a show, you know, we, we know their names and, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. and then they know ours and, and we hang out and we see each other and, you know, has developed, I think, this closer bond with our fans, which is you know, obviously a, a, a wonderful thing. That is really cool and an amazing success story as well for you guys. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously the whole reason that the Patreon started, you know, at the beginning of 2016 was because we were broke. You know, we had no money and we had tours, our tour offers coming up and it was that challenge of, well, we had tours coming up but we're not getting offered enough money to make a profit and so we actually need to have money to invest in order to be able to do these tours and we thought, well, you know, like our fans, if they knew that we were turning down tours because we didn't have enough money, I'm like, you know, I know there'd be some of them that would be willing to, to help us out. And 
just from that feeling of, well, hey, if you help us do this, then we'll be able to come because that's what we did with our World Tour crowdfunding campaign in 2014. We literally said, hey, if you can help us get this money together, then we will come and tour to your part of the world. And we listed where we would go. And that was good enough for people to say, hey, they've never been to Europe, they've never been to North America. I, I will pay to help them come. And it's not a donation because you're giving them stuff. You know, it's like, hey, we created this great product. If you, all you need to do is help buy it. And then obviously we're making a profit on top of whatever it costs to create the product that we're then going to put into funding tours. And, you know, the great thing is with where the band is now is, you know, it's three years on. You know, we're not quite at that position where everyone in the band is able to do it full time, but you know, we do get paid. You know, like a decent part-time salary, which is way more than most fans get. And so we're so massively appreciative of that. And that's all because of our fans and how amazing they are. So, you know, we just have this like eternal gratitude, like <laughs> overflowing, um, towards our amazing fans. And, uh, you know, I guess we're just always working hard to, to try and, you know, do the right thing by them by creating the best music we can and put on the best shows possible. It is an amazing success story and one that we will continue to push because, well, yeah, more near Bliriscaris is always going to be better. <laughs> well, that's the idea. And, you know, there's a lot of bands that, that literally you know, break up because of finances. And a, mm. a lot of bands don't want to talk about that because it's a bit of an awkward, you know, situation. <laughs> and, um, that was one of the things where we decided, you know, screw this like let's just be honest let's just tell them hey we're broke most bands are broke like you know the system's not working it's not supplying bands with the money they need to tour and and actually live like a reasonable like above the poverty line yeah. life and uh you know let's do some some new things and you know there's definitely some other bands that have been you know jumping on the idea which has been you know which has been fantastic um you know a, a legion you know have their own patreon um, you know, another great band, you know, Persephone, to set up a Patreon, you know, about three or four months ago, um, and, you know, a few others as well. Well, it is hopefully keeping on working and building to something positive. It is absolutely fantastic, and I always love bringing this subject up because it's something that doesn't happen often enough. Uh, so jumping forward, though, I want to know what... Uh, like this tour is coming up obviously but what is next for Nia Bliviscaris it's been a couple of years since Urn was released what's in the future for you guys uh, another new album basically um, you know in the last I guess it's been you know, almost 18 months since Urn came out now and you know we've done you know two tours of North America you know we did a headline tour we did a tour with you know supporting Winter Sun you know, we've done two tours of Mexico. Um, we've done, you know, two different tours through, through Europe and the UK. One headlining uh, with Legion, another supporting Ishan, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we were doing a festival tour in Europe as well in June. You know, we just toured through Japan and Asia just, you know, just a few weeks ago. Um, and so we've been not everywhere in the world, but we've been a lot of places, you know, and most of them we've been more than once over the last 18 months. And so, that's why I guess at the moment we're like, okay, Australian tour, you know, European festivals in June, and then after that, let's let's just focus on the new album unless we get a tour offer that's just too good to refuse, basically. <laughs> so that's pretty much where we're at the moment. You know, I think we'll be home you know, most of the next few months, just spending as much time as we can, you know, composing some some new music and uh, trying to get that ready so that hopefully we can record sometime later this year. Ah, that is amazing news. All right, man, I will mention again, you guys are in the country May 9th to the 12th. This tour looks massive with five huge bands on stage, including yourselves. We cannot wait, and it is just around the corner. Uh, it's been fantastic talking to you, man. Absolutely. Uh, it would be great to, to see you at the show, and, yeah, hope you enjoy yourself if you do. Absolutely. Thanks very much, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks very much, Razor.